And God had instructed the people, don't let the fire go out, and it went out. And as you study the word and you realize that between Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament, and Matthew in the New Testament, that there were 400 years of nothingness. No prophetic voice, no light, no revelation, no open vision. It was a very dark time because there was no fire until one day God said, you know what? I love this world so much. I need to send the fire back. Come on. This is the way that's grateful to God's grace. Amen. Yes. And I'm here today to declare to each one of you today that God's fire is still available. Yes. Come on. His fire is still available. Yeah. You say, well, well, how did all of that happen 2,000 years ago? Once again, the sparks from heaven began touching Ooh. the earth. It began with John the Baptist. We read it a moment ago yeah. as he began to pre preach about Jesus. Matthew chapter 3. He said, I am not worthy to carry his sandals. But he said, I baptize you with water. But he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Come on. John said, hey, listen. There's going to be a remission of the fire that was in the Old Testament. Amen. Amen. That fire is going to bring holiness to the people of God. That fireness is going to bring power to the people of God. That fire is going to bring his presence back to the people of God. Now, the Old Testament fire was combined just to one place. The New Testament fire, God says, I'm going to pour it out all over the world. I'm going to let the fire fall all over the nation. Amen. Anywhere there's a hungry heart, anywhere there's someone who seeks me, anyone that's thirsty for me, I'm going to pour my spirit on it. I'm going to put my fire on it. And I'm going to put my fire down on the inside of them. Come on. Amen. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 4. We read that there were 120 believers gathered in an upper room. And they were waiting, as Jesus had said, for them to wait. Jesus had been, had died, buried, resurrected, and walked on earth, showed himself by many infallible proofs that he was alive, ascended back into heaven. He told his disciples, you wait because I'm going to send someone else. I'm going to send another, a comforter. He was talking of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2 and verse number 4, this 100 group of 120 was there waiting. And the scripture tells us this, suddenly there came a sound like the blowing of a violin and wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And notice what it says. It says they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. Come on. Could it be that that's a supernatural fire from heaven for this day and age? I believe that it is. And it says this, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Amen. Listen, the fire didn't fall in the desert. It didn't fall on the brazen altar. But I'll tell you, it fell on men and women who were saying, God, I'll be willing to be a city off of my body as a sacrifice. Come on. I'll be willing to do whatever I need to do. All I want is to be a poor, you fire out upon me by your Spirit of God. Amen. I've had people tell me, in fact, I got a little review on one of my YouTube channels. I was preaching about the coming of Jesus. And the guy said, please, when you preach, you don't have to get excited. Please talk in a calm voice. Now, I've had people tell me, Pastor Bob, where are you going up there when you're walking back and forth? Where's the fire at anyhow? Why are you acting that way? Why do you got to get so excited? This is what I tell them. Hey, listen, his word is down on the inside of me. Shut up like a fire. Come on. And when the scripture says he makes his ministers a freedom of fire. Oh, come on. Well, the next time you're at your family reunion, okay? And sister, quench, quench person decides to tell you, hey, why do you always got to be talking about Jesus for? Why do you always got to be singing and humming a tune like that about amazing grace? And, oh, how sweet the sound. And, uh, why do you got to do that? You tell them, look, I cannot help, but there's a fire down on the inside of me. Amen. And it's burning bright. Come on, your grandmother says, I want to shine for Jesus. 
No, I tell you, our nation needs the fire of God back in our churches. That's right. I'm concerned about what's going on in our nation. Amen. We, we, we're, we're messed up. We don't value life. We don't respect our elders. We don't even value the life of our unborn. We, we exalt every name but the name of Jesus. We think we can redefine marriage. Our young people think that life is found out there in the clubs. They think they've got to have drugs in order to have peace and have it a good time. But brother, what they need to do is listen to the song that you sang a few minutes ago. Yeah. Because when the Spirit of God falls, when the glory of God touches this people out here today to tell you that it is a good time. Come on, somebody. The fire of the Lord. And we cannot let the fire go out. Well, I've got a few points there on how to maintain the fire. I'll, I'll let you read them and figure them out. I'm going to tell a story before we go to the, to the Lord. Yosemite National Park. I guess it's in Oregon, I think. Yeah. Out in Oregon. Many years ago they had something called Firefall. Oh. There was a there was a hotel that was built up on a bluff. And it kind of started by accident that this owner of this hotel would every evening as the guests would gather from their vacationing spots and looking at all the beautiful scenery, they would have a big bonfire for them. And, and you know, he built such a big fire that, you know, he couldn't put it out at night. So he would take it, he would push the fire off the cliff. And pretty soon people from all over began to come. And then he started building bigger fires and bigger fires and getting tractors and it became a huge spectacle as people would gather in the meadows down below to watch the fire fall. It wow. fell thousands of feet, the glowing embers falling down. It was called Firefall until about 1967. The Parks Department decided this is not a natural phenomenon. This is not probably something safe that we ought to be doing and they put a stop to it, all right? But interestingly enough, that before the fire began to fall, every night the owner of this hotel would go out there with a, he would, he would take a, a big uh, torch and he would put it in oil and he would light that torch and he would move across like this and he would signal to everybody, hey, the fire is about to fall. The fire is about to fall. And let me tell you something, I believe, I, I believe that this is the truth. I believe that God the Father is signaling some of the angels up in heaven. Right. And he's saying, hey, you need to get the big giant torch out and you need to begin to wave it because I'm going to get ready to pour out my final outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. God is looking for a church that's on fire. God is looking for a church that is not ashamed to say I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the spirit of the living God. I preach the word and I walk in faith and holiness and come on somebody. We need the fire of God in our hearts. fire burning like staying in the word of God. Come on. And if it's been a while since you've been to the book of Leviticus, you need to bust it out and read it. Come on. Amen. Start studying the word. Get into the word. Amen. Don't, they don't need to, you know, you, you've got to, what are those five points anyway? There it is up there. We need to worship. You can't maintain the fire without worship. That's right. It's the sacrifice of your praise, amen, yeah. upon the altar of your life. Come on. Yeah. That the Lord is looking at the only time you praise God is when you come to church. I feel sorry for you. Right. Just let me tell you something. We ought to be praising Him all the time. Amen. Yeah. And you need to have a willingness to obey Him. Not just to read the word, but a willingness to obey Him. As you obey Him, that's when your fire comes. Yeah. And a witness. Ah. That's what the fire is for. Amen. Witness. Amen. Yes. And to walk with Christ. Yes. When I say walk with Christ, I don't mean just to one day acknowledge, hey, yep, I needed Jesus. He forgave me. I'm good. And yes. just walk away. To walk with Christ means to walk with him every day. That's right. That's right. What he tells you, you do. That's right. Amen. You talk to him. I want the fire. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Could you lift your hands across this place? Oh, just tell them I need the fire. I need the fire of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Spirit of the living God. Oh, I'm telling you that the fire is going to fall. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you today. Come on, let's.
worship him. Let's give our hearts in praise. Let's give our hearts in praise and adoration for who he is. God, we give you praise today. Pastor, 